of our Grand Theft Cthulhu G Plus online role playing. We've got Whoa. Afro Dave playing Denny Watley down there. We've got mm -hmm. Peter Bushcraft Forrester playing Horatio Watley in the green. We've got myself, John, as the games master, and we have Pigeon of Ascendant Gaming down there in the corner as Trevor Watley. Give it a thumbs up. I can we just say that Fart is also eating rusks because he's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I have a baby. Okay. Now, before we start this game, um, just give you a quick synopsis of what happened last time. The three Watley boys were sent out by their crime family, allegedly to steal a consignment of weapons from the rival Peabody family who run the crime world in Arkham City. They've been tasked by their family, the Watleys, in stealing these armaments to propel them back to the top of the heap. However, when they actually reached the um, tanker truck that was supposed to contain the weapons and stole it away smashing through a police barricade and an army truck to get away they instead found a small statue which appeared to be a combination of a hedgehog and a slug made out of a reddish rusty metal with three fronds or tendrils sculpted out of the base of it each with a ruby set on the top now they t took the tanker truck to one of the garages belonging to Trevor Watley. Whilst they were there, one of the people who works for him, Jovan, was unfortunate enough to get stuck with one of the spikes on the statue. And over the course of the next few minutes, he gradually changed into a zombie-like creature that dissolved into a puddle of green slime when they dispatched him eventually. They also faced the fury of Fat Abbott Watley, who, who revealed that they had apparently been double crossed by their own family, the Watleys, and indeed the whole Watley family was now after them, as well as the police. They dispatched Fat Abbott, and in their attempts to get away, Trevor unfortunately also stuck himself with one of the spikes of the statue. Feeling an infection working its way up his arm, and with scant few moments to make a decision, he hastily effected a tourniquet out of his belt and used a giant angle grinder to sever his arm at the elbow. As he passed out in the back of the car, Horatio and Denny decided to make a break for it, realizing that oh. the. What about yeah. Scarlet? Yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. All right. They decided to make a break for it. They had also lost one of the young women who works for Trevor Watley as a receptionist, Sandra Scarlet West, who had something of a stormy on-off love affair with Denny. She was unfortunately caught in the crossfire between Fat Abbott and the Watley boys and died in Denny's arms whilst they were waiting for an ambulance. After forcing the ambulance men to pump Trevor with as many high-strength painkillers as they possibly could, Horatio Watley then rendered them all unconscious, bundled Trevor into the back of the car since he was losing consciousness, and they decided to make a break for it, realising that the law wouldn't be far behind. And that's where we're going to start this session. Now, before we start, guys, one additional thing that I want to mention to you this session is, you know how you all have those aspects, your high concept, your trouble, and you have the other one, like yep. that you use to spend your fate points on? What you can also do is, <coughs> seats can also have aspects. So, for example, let's say in your garage, Pidge, there'd been oil all over the floor. I might say to you, this scene has an aspect of slippery floor. Now, that's an aspect that you guys can use to spend your fate points on, even though it's not yours. So, for instance, Pidge, you could quite happily go, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a fate point because as the opponent runs in to get me, he's going to slide on the floor and I'm going to ram the side of the noggin and that will give me my plus two to the roll. You can also make rolls to create aspects yourself. So let's say, Pidge, you're holding like an Indiana Jones style flaming torch. And you go, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and set this, this fool who's attacking me on fire. You make a roll and if you succeed, that person then gets the aspect on fire or whatever the aspect is. You can then also use that. So you could say when you attack him in the next turn, Oh, because he's distracted by being on fire, I'm going to spend a fate point to get my plus two with that. Now, on the turn when you... So, when you first create an aspect, so on the turn when you set fire to him, 
normally because you've created it the next use of it is free you don't have to spend a fate point on it but then after that you have to spend a fate point as normal Does, has everyone got that yeah there's also the rule there's also the rule of four in the job where if you get four or more you get an extra one don't you an extra aspect to use it that's it yeah yeah but you can also stack them as well, so you can get plus four, plus six if you had enough aspects, you know what I mean, put together. Yeah, yeah, basically you can use multiple aspects in a roll as long as you're not using the same one. You can only use yeah. each aspect once, but you can use more than one aspect. One thing also to mention that I didn't bring up last time is, you know you start at your refresh rate of three for fate points, so you're all back up to three fate points. Yeah. Yeah. You, can go, you can go above three, that's not a maximum. So even if you've got like three, you can still earn more by <laughs> suggesting complications. Right. Mm. So you can have as many or as few fate points as you're able to accumulate. Also, just because I feel a bit, a bit weird, can we give uh, Foz a, a, a stun? <laughs> yeah, you might want to actually think about a stun Foz since you never picked one at all. Like, like last time. Like guns or something like that. I'll be honest, I'm really sure you've come up with one. Um, There's quite a, just... Make them simple, you don't have to be complicated about it. Can't yeah, just I'll, I'll tell you what, Foss, the simplest way of doing it is what one cool thing would you like your character to do at some point during the session? If you, if I said there's one thing you're going to be able to do and you're not going to even have to make a roll, you would just succeed at it, what would it be? The ability to take, if you're in a building on the third and 12th on the just be able to take people out with military trainers. Okay, so you're so you're basically looking for a stunt that um, once per game you'll be able to take someone out using a handgun without having to make a roll. Yeah. Will that be all right? Okay, yeah. I shall put that down as your stunt. Make sure you guys have all got access to your like whatever character sheets you saved. Yeah. yeah. Character sheet. Okay, and I'm going to put your stunt down, Foz. And that's only usable once per game. So any yeah. other time you'll any other time you'll have to roll, but once per game you can effectively take someone out without rolling. And I'm just writing that down. Apart from Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just <laughs> fine. <laughs> Save it to right the end. Oh, Cthulhu's here. Doing a stunt. <laughs> you need more than one stunt to like take that bad boy down. <laughs> For real. Okay, right, guys. We're going to crack okay. off now, then. And I'm going to start with you first, Pigerino. Hello. Trevor Watley. Okay, Trevor, the last thing you remember is you were being bundled into the car by Horatio and Denny. The pain of your severed arm keeping you, the only thing that was keeping you conscious really, however, as the, due to the blood loss and the shock, you can feel yourself sort of slipping into unconsciousness. The next thing you know, Trevor, you're standing on a a street, a strange street that seems to be made entirely of black, slick cobblestones. You look around for Denny and Horatio, but you don't see them anywhere nearby. Looking, uh, looking around, you see that there are large buildings made of a similar strange black stone in twisted odd sort of spires rising from the ground to the surface looking in front of you on the road ahead again all made out of this strange black cobblestone you can see numerous red sort of shelled spiny creatures that all appear to be lying dead you know like how when you're on a beach you see sort of like sea urchins etc that have died when they've come out of the water and they've dried up yeah similar to that littering the entire street as far as the eye can see you you put your one good arm out in front of you and as you do you notice that the hairs on the back of your arm are moving almost lazily and you see a distortion in the air you open your mouth as if to shout and no sound emerges but a single bubble of air goes bloom and drifts up in front of you before drifting out of your field of vision what do you do um I move my arm about, my one arm, okay. to see okay. if there's any more bubbles or anything to ask. Well, I could probably tell if I'm underwater, really, can't yeah. I? 
I want to ascertain if I am in fact underwater. Indeed, you move your arm about in front of you, and you can feel the slight resistance that would suggest you are underwater. Okay. Is there any light anywhere? Is it daytime or...? There appears to be a... a wan, sort of pale moonlight filtering down from somewhere far above, but it's very pale and lends everything around you a sort of eerie, greenish glow. It's clear that wherever you are is extremely deep underwater. Right, okay. I'm going to try and start walking down this cobbly street. Okay, you move slowly with the pressure of the water. It's almost like you're in a, a dream, sort of drifting along. As you do, you can feel that the, the cobbles of the street, the street started to slope ever so slowly downwards, and you, you move past some of these large, twisted, black, metallic-looking buildings. And they're, they're so odd in design and so twisted that they're like nothing you've ever seen before in your entire life. They look almost entirely alien to you. And as you drift past them, you seem to be heading into some sort of almost like market square is probably the nearest you can get to it. But you see, as you do, that the entirety of this, um, this place, this city almost, seems to be sloping down towards the centre of this town square and in the middle is a large black hole or ravine that's so dark that you can't see the bottom of it, it just sort of drops down into this hole. Okay, <clears throat> is there um, any loose stones or anything on the floor near me? Looking around you can indeed see that some of the black cobbles are loose, yeah. Can I pick one up and try and chuck it into the ravine to see if it makes a sound or try and see how deep it is maybe? Not a problem. You throw this rock into the ravine. It, it topples end over end and then disappears down the hole. For a few moments, nothing happens. Then you hear a sound echoing from the deep ravine. It sort of goes... <laughs> Jesus. and a bright red light from something deep within inside the ravine shines out as this this awe-inspiring and sort of terrifying sound that sends a chill through your bones and for a moment it sort of, you feel a sort of a cold feeling on the stump of your missing arm as this noise continues <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what do you do? Um, well, I'll take a step back from the ravine. Not a problem. You, you hesitantly take a step back as the noise continues. <laughs> uh, I want to look around to see if anything else has been disturbed by the noise. Looking around, you can see that from the silt and the, the dirt and the soil that is collected on the buildings and the cobbles, that aside from your footsteps, it looks as though no one has trod these streets in some years. But 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 now you look around. Hold on, is that is that is that a set of tracks you can see in the dirt leading away from the hole? Yeah, gonna follow them, bad boys. Okay, you follow them and interspersed with them are a sort of number of other tracks. Some of them are barefoot. Some of them you can actually see bits of um, the outlines of bones as though skeletal feet were treading the dust. Some of them are modern shoe prints like trainers on the soil. Then right. suddenly everything appears to pause for a minute as again you hear from behind you. <laughs> everything does what when I hear the noise? Everything seems to pause. Right. So even the dust, even the dust seems to stop, almost like a sort of a more sinister version of bullet time, as motes of dust hang in the water in front of you, and a bright red light shines from behind you. You can feel something like a warm, at your back, as though someone had like lit a fire behind you. At the minute you're looking straight in front, what do you do? The noise wow. appears to be closer now. 
I'm probably not going to be able to manage it much. I'm going to start trying to move forward as quickly as I can, and then just look over my shoulder as I'm trying to get far away. Okay, as you glance over your shoulder, you see this huge, sort of amorphous black shape, dark against the water. The only thing that breaks up the blackness are three red pinpricks of glowing light, like three red eyes boring into your very soul. You can feel there, you can feel a tremendous hatred and a tremendous evil surging out from them. It sort of seems to penetrate your very body. Okay, Danny and Horatio. Oh yeah, driving. Why would we do well, you guys have actually holed up in a small property owned by Horatio that's by the riverside. That's where you've driven to. Okay. Trevor passed out in the back of the car and Horatio was like, look, I've got a bolt hole near here. I've got a few properties around the city in case like the bomb ever dropped. I've got this little sh I've got this little shack near the river. It's one of like the abandoned like um pumping stations. Let's take him there. And you're holed up in this like little sort of like woodcutted shack almost. Okay, well, Horatio's just disappeared, so I'm on my own. <laughs> okay, not a problem. We'll, as we'll assume that Horatio's checking... Oh, here we go. He's back. Okay, you're back, Fosky Errors. Yeah. Okay. I'm on the network. <laughs> okay, you've holed up in this small cottage that you own, Horatio, and the first thing you're aware of it is as you pull up in the car outside... The first thing that you're aware of Trevor's horrendous nightmares is when Trevor awakes in the back of the car with an exclamation of, Trevor, what do you say when you first wake up as these eyes bore towards you? The eyes! The eyes! Oh, and then you, what the fuck is that? Then you snap out with a cry as you wake up. From my one arm. Ah! He literally jerks upright in the seat, sort of screaming his tits off. I'd be like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, Danny, can you make me a driving roll? Oh, brilliant. I'm great at these. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we, all, we all remember your, your miggity multitasking last time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to be probably quick enough uh, to get back my reactions from driving from the shock of him screaming in my face. Okay, no problem, make your roll. Oh. Oh. Bad times that. Okay. I'm taking that roll. Bloody Trev. <laughs> okay. Distracted by the screaming, you accidentally press your foot down on the accelerator and you mash the car into one of the metal sort of um, bollards by the side of the riverbank and liter <laughs> literally stave in the front of the car. If Trevor was in any sort of fit state to like talk since he's still quite shaky after his dream he'd be telling yeah. you that that car's a write off son <laughs> I'll presume that well we're going to have to get out of the water the rest of the way yeah. while you're there oh, you, well, it wasn't my fault I didn't expect him to be screaming in my face like eyes Boz you spelled your name wrong yeah daddy you just smashed the car into a bollard outside the secret house that's not sus is it Oh, well, well, sorry, it wasn't, it wasn't actually my plan. I didn't plan it. Okay, Trevor, you, you're now sort of starting to realise a bit where you are. Looking around as the dream sort of fades away, you can see that you're still lying on the back seat of the now stationary pimp mobile that you sorted out for the guys. You slowly start to, your heartbeat starts to slow down as you um, customise yourself to the surroundings. You realise that, oh, Thank, thank God, it, it, it was all just a horrible nightmare, no doubt caused by the recent loss of your limb and the, the lapping of the water from the river nearby. What's your first reaction as you realise where you are, Trevor? I'm going to hold my arm because it still feels cold. For a few moments, it's, it's difficult to tell because obviously there's still the shock of the, um, the recent severage, but for a few moments as your fingertips brush the end of your arm, it does feel a little bit sort of chill and sort of almost clammy. I'm going to look around to see where the boys are. They're, they're in the front of the car. They both appear to be arguing about the fact that Denny's just plowed the car 
into a metal bollard. Boys. Boys. What now, Trev? Back in the world of the living, are you one armed bandit? <laughs> Boys, it's important. It's very important. You just made me smash the car. I've just had a nightmare. So have I, I've just smashed the car. You are a nightmare, Danny. Shut up, then, speak. <laughs> I was underwater oh in my nightmare and looking what? around there was a load of black buildings I was very deep underwater I started walking down this street and I came to this massive hole I picked up one of the cobbles off the floor with my one arm and I chucked it down the hole Right. And then I heard this almighty roaring, twisting, bubbling, horrible sound. So I thought, I'd better get away from this hole. I looked around and saw some tracks and started to follow them. But as, as I was walking away from the hole, I could feel warmth at my back. There was something behind me. And as I turned around, I saw these three bright red lights shining towards me and the, the noise, the horrible noise carried on and then I woke up. Now, normally I'll say that's probably all those p pills that we gave you and medication to, uh, you know, to chill you out, but Scarlett didn't mention something about underwater, sea, underwater city before she died. It's a bit weird. We've all been drunk in some kind of conspiracy set up by the government. What if you think there's some drugs on that that statue or something that's making people go crazy? Yeah, probably something to that, some kind of mad from the that kills you. Have you heard of anything that does that and also makes you melt and go green because then you get kicked in the face? I've heard stories, but when I was out in Afghanistan, I heard stories then. Yeah, well, we've heard some of your bloody stories on the way to that job. You know, most of them are mental. That's why I left. <laughs> I don't know if I believe you, Horatio. Right, can we get out of this anyway? We'll get we'll get to this bloody safe house and then we'll talk about this when we get there. Because I'd rather talk about there and sit in this smashed up car. Okay guys, you climb out of the car. You're literally like no more than hundred yards away from this safe house. You're sort of like down by the very edge of the river where there's sort of like brickwork and then it drops down into the river. It's like metal bollards and railings all along the side, one of which is what you've run the car into. And this small hut looks like it was once a maintenance hut of some variety. Um, it's obviously been long abandoned, and Horatio's claimed it as one of his, um, in case the fallout happens and the bomb drops, nuclear paranoia shelters. Right. One of his nutter houses, as we call them in the family. Horatio yeah. on as he's currently named. <laughs> yeah, well, it, well he, he wasn't—he he wasn't in the military for his spelling ability. Or um, <laughs> 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 That's I'm the, I'm the crap speller for, not you. What's my Your name, Your name. <laughs> Like a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not spelled wrong. Maybe just put the N on uh, automatically. That's what I do sometimes. Yeah. Being dyslexic, I get away with it. Shut up, I'm the head. <laughs> oh, that, 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 that fit well over your face, then, Foz. <laughs> it's subliminal messaging. That's it, man. <laughs> That's how the government gets you. Okay, guys, cracking on. Trey, what, what you've got to you have it? to do anything. Don't. Right. Ignore him. This car, let's push it in the river so no one can see it. Dead, it's done. We don't need it. Get rid of it. Dead, get out and start pushing. Yep. Well, we'll get the bag out first. Yeah, there is still the matter of the statue in the. I'm not going near that bag. All right, Horatio, you get that. We'll push the car. I will point out you aren't in any danger while it's in the bag because Horatio was careful while he was handling it with welding gloves, which he's still wearing, by the way, to wrap it in multiple layers of thick leather. To make sure no one else gets spiked by it. Alright, Horatio, give me one of them gloves and I'll hold on to the handles of the bag while you two push the car because I'm not pushing it with me one arm. Do you want, right. do you want a pair of gloves, Trevor? 
Yeah, give me the pair of <laughs> both on one hand. <laughs> Double bag. Handle of this bag, and I get the other one. Danny, you get pushy. You crash it. You can bloody well push it. Wah wah wah. Push push push. Not pushing on my own. Still bloody hell. Okay, it's still dark, guys. It's probably about um, one o'clock in the morning now. So, Trevor, you're going to take the um, the bag containing the idol out of the boot of the car. Is that correct? Yeah, wearing one of the gloves. Yeah, that's not a problem. Okay, you gingerly, given your previous experience with it, lift it out of the boot. It seems to be well wrapped up. Horatio, for all his faults, is definitely his paranoia has paid off in this case. Since he's not just double bagged it for safety, he's like quadruple bagged it for safety, and he's wrapped it all up in like thick chamois and like other leather, so That's that he found paranoia. it. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it pays to be paranoid. Oh, it does. It does. It pays to have okay. paranoid. What one good thing about your um, crash, Danny, is that since you've effectively totaled an area of the metal bollard, yeah. you've now actually got space in the railings to easily push the car through into the river. See? All planned. Okay, and after a bit of a bit of heaving and pushing, you're rewarded when the car rolls gently over the side and with a loud <laughs> it drops into the water and soon right. disappears into the murky, polluted depths of the river. Did you get my CDs out of there, Danny? Oh, I forgot my cigarettes. Never mind your cigarettes, I've got all my fucking CDs in the changer. <laughs> You can get more CDs. Blasted. <laughs> okay, you're all standing on the ri the riverside. Yeah. Trevor is holding the bag containing the idol. What do you all plan to do? Oh, we've got to find this Horatio's gaff. Yeah. Like I say, you're literally like a few hundred yards away from it. So. Let's get in there and get on the river. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, no problems. You let yourself in using the key that Horatio's got. What sort of things would you have in, in like an emergency shelter, Horatio? Since you're the one who like put this together. Weapons. Food. Yeah, you've got cans of food. And water. Yeah, no problems. Of what? I missed that. Tin food. Lots of yeah. guns. Uh, um, general kind of survival gear, like hazmat suits, gas masks, that kind of thing. Uh, what else would I have in there? Water, medical kit. Yeah, yeah, like still like water, medical kits, medicine. Well, what we'll do is save going yeah, to yeah. the detail. You've got all of that, Foz, and if at any point it becomes relevant, if you need. Uh, an item, and it's something that could conceivably and realistically be in a small fallout shelter. I'm quite willing to say that, yeah, you've probably got it. Cool. So just, just use a bit of your own discretion with it. That's absolutely fine, mate. Okay. Trevor yeah. puts puts down the bag on a small square table in the middle of the room. There's a few sort of like uh, collapsible chairs dotted around that you quickly fold out and put down, and you're all sat around this table with this idol on it between you. What do you do? Well, what's the plan, lads? We've been screwed by the family. And we've got their item. I'm still confused as to what what, what the fuck's actually happened here. Well, we got sent think? by Pearson to get this off the Peabody's. We've not heard anything else from the Peabody's. They've not come looking for us. But all of our fucking families kicking off at us now. Oh yeah, well, we're obviously the dupes, but yeah, I don't, I don't know why they sent us to get this unless they're going to take it off us. Yeah, we've been shafted by someone somewhere along the line. Well, Pearson gave us the mission yeah. himself to go get yeah. this thing. But that now he's saying him? that we've nicked it off him. So, is is there any way that you boys can think of that we potentially securely? get a message to him asking why without actually having to put ourselves at risk. Maybe get some kind of untraceable mobile phone and page or something or like disposable ones. Right, well I suggest we bunker ourselves in for the night 
and then in the morning we'll drive out to some random location. Yeah. Phone the fuckers up and then snap all our phones and then get out of that area. So even if they, they can't they can only trace to that area. We've got to snap mine. Well I'll yeah, that's true. You dick. <laughs> but we need to go somewhere random. Get a like phone them up, ask what the fuck's going on. And then, even if they do come looking for us in that area, we'll be long gone by the time they get there. Unless, of course, someone's followed us. But obviously, Denny, you are aware of the fact that that you still potentially have a contact in yeah, Louis. Louis Graves. Yeah, I thought I was going to say about him. So yeah, I can try and get in contact with Louis and see if uh, he knows what's going on. He's, He's right, a bit. Yeah. Louis's a bit of a pimp around town, so you know, like his territory and his patch. Yeah. Let's seek him out. Then. Pidge, can you make me a careful roll, please, Trevor? Yeah. Oh, plus one. As you're you're all talking, Trevor, you notice that um, where you put the bag, the sort of the top of the bag has sort of like just fallen back a bit with sort of weight of gravity, and you can see one of these sort of like tentacles that's coming out the top of it. Uh, sort of like sticking up a bit out the top of the bag and you can see one of the sort of red rubies set on the top of this tentacle sort of sparkling in the light of the single bulb that illuminates this room that you're in oh guys guys it's the eyes it's the fucking eyes what you want about you boy? yeah what about eyes shut that fucking bag shut the bag what are you all about someone shut the bag look at the statue I'm looking at the bag, John, see what you're talking about. Okay, you look in the bag and you can see the statue there. As I described it previously, it's like some sort of sea urchin or maybe a slug that's crossed with a hedgehog. Out of the top of it emerge three sort of sculpted tentacles. <coughs> Each of them has a ruby set at the end. It looks as though the bag's just sort of like fallen open a little bit and the edge of one of these sculpted tentacles with the ruby on is like poking out of the top of it. And Trevor appears to be staring at it, a couple of beads of sweat on his forehead. Well, I'll put it back over it again. No problem, you, you just pull the top of the bag over it. No. It's really affecting that, isn't it, Trev? Yeah, I don't like it. You know what, boys? I've just had a thought. Why are we carrying that thing with us? It's, it just fucked my arm up. It's making me trip out. Well, because I they don't want it. I bet there's fucking cameras in there. That's why they know where we are. I, I think we should dunk it in a river. No. No. I'm going to have a look at the photos of one of those things. I'm going to try and prize one of the night. Okay, not a problem. You go for it. You'll have to make a roll for that. What sort of approach are you going to use, Horatio? They're very careful. Okay, make your careful roll. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> Ooh! Minus two! This is always it's terrible. Okay, can you make fate me point. a... Can you make me a... Are you going to use a fate point? I would. Reroll. Right. What, what, what aspect are you using? Um. Uh, when you say aspect, what is that, do you mean I can't remember? Um, words. You remember your high concept of your trouble, and that was the other one. So for you, you had, uh, let's see, you had nuclear fallout survivalist as your concept. You had a wall from the army as your trouble, and your other aspect was gun nut. Those are your three aspects. So you need to somehow tie this action in with one of those three things I'm in order going to spend to, a fate point. I'm going to use a wall from the army. Yep. In the army. I would have had some training dealing, dealing with improvised explosive devices and how to disarm them. And I'm going to use similar that's, that's absolutely fine. I've crossed off one of your fate points to make your re-roll. Or you can add two to it if you wish. No. <laughs> well, I'd say go to re-roll. Re-roll that shit. <laughs> no, that's hey! like Great. Okay. What's you don't seem to be able to prize one of the rubies free of the statue and as you do it you're trying to do so presumably with like a little pocket knife or something you've got on you you 
it's it's very difficult to get a um, a grip on it. Normally, you'd be looking for some groove or sort of niche where you where it had been fixed into it that you could stick your knife in and jimmy it free. However, it's almost like it's sort of like it's completely smooth. There's no sort of noticeable joint, and your knife slips off it for a moment. Your hand goes perilously near to the spikes in the bag, but you quickly reel back and pull your hand out of the way before you touch one of them. Well, that ain't out, boys. Uh, I don't think we should throw it in the water because that's probably the only thing that gives alive at the moment since they want it, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Well, I'm not going near it again, though. You can fuck that off. I still think there's cameras in it, so I think we should lock it up somewhere. Uh, what? Cameras? Denny. I don't fucking know. Denny. What? You listening, Denny? Yeah, I'm listening. Go on. Like, whilst you've been dealing in your casino. Have you ever had any dealings with like, people who run sort of things like you know, black market antiques and stuff like that that you might be able to have a chat with? Any contacts or anything like that? Kind of Very good question, yeah. I probably would know a couple of people that I could uh, have a word with. That certainly seems within the realms of possibility. Yeah. Dave, uh, I'll tell you what, would you care to make me a roll to see if you see if you can remember any of the details of your contacts? That's obviously you've not got your phone with you, like you would yeah. have normally. Um, I'll let you, probably a clever would be the most applicable, but if you can fit anything else in, feel free. As well, I've changed all my settings around, you can hear me better now. Not really, in fact it sounds a little bit worse. Yeah, you can hear the fuzziness. Right, make your roll, Dave. Just make sure you speak clearly, Foz, when you talk. Just going to have a quick look at what I'm going to use. Can I use uh, quick for quick minded to remember the numbers? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit yeah, tenuous, but I'll allow it. No, it is like, I mean, quick, quickly trying to reel them off. Okay, it's a fair roll. I will say uh, you could. John? Yeah. Just so I get, I get it better than that, uh, I'll use a fair point. Okay. With my uh, security and family, basically, uh, aspect to give me a plus four. Okay, so that gives you a great roll. I'll yeah. say that you can certainly remember the details of the person you dealt with most recently in that area. Would you like to give a name for the person in that area and a sort of brief description of what they're like since it's your contact? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, call him uh, Charlie. Uh, Last name. I've got a big list of last names here if you want me to pick one for you. Yeah, go on. Okay. Go, let's find my list of names. Okay. I'm going to call him Charlie Hartwell. Charlie Hartwell. Yeah. Um, just a brief description, like a sort of high concept for him. What sort of person is he? Okay. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he, he actually used to be a lecturer and uh, he's like a philanthropist. Okay. Exactly. What does he do now? Um, uh, well, basically now he's just kind of like trying to just sell anything he can get hold of, and uh, basically cause he's got a gang gambling problem. That's why he's in the casino and stuff. And uh, so he's kind of become a bit of a joke in the area, but he does deal with black market um, kind of items and you know, hot stuff. So he's a good person to know if you want to sell something quickly. Okay, so I I put him down as a I put him down as a high concept ex lecturer turned black market dealer. Yeah. And I'm gonna put trouble gambling addict. Yeah. Okay, not a problem. Yeah, luckily you um dealt with Charlie fairly recently, so you can actually remember his phone number. Obviously you've got far too many contacts to remember normally in your head. You normally yeah. keep it all in your phone, but but these two um. <laughs> sure. Uh, slapped out of your hand when you were talking to your man Louis Graves. So you've lost all that now, but luckily you've still got a business card from Charlie Hartwell that you snagged to write down something on the back of last time you were there. You've still got it in your inside pocket. Okay. Here's one of your phones. I have my SIM card. I raised your time to SIM card, you can't help me out. Oh, Horatio. I don't think we should bring anyone while we're here, though, because it, it, I what? think we should bunker down and wait till the morning and go out somewhere, because if someone traces us... Have you, got, have you got his paranoia? Right, yeah, then take my fucking phone. If we get jumped, it's your fault. 
Is it not going to be tapping every single person that we've ever had contact with? Well, I would have thought Pearson, if Pearson is fucking us, they'd at least tap our phone. Okay. okay. Trevor's thrown his phone down on the table in front of you, Danny. Right, grab the phone. You pick it up. Type the number in. Okay, not a problem. The phone rings a few times, then you hear a voice saying, Hello? Hello? Charles, is that you? There he is. <laughs> yes, this is he. Who am I speaking to? Denny. I'm talking to Denny Watley. Ah, young Master Watley. And what do I owe the pleasure? I hear you've been a, um, something of a naughty fellow recently. Well, the old news travels fast. Well, indeed, you're all over the news, my boy. Well, I can't, uh, say, yeah, I can't say it's a terribly good picture of yourselves and your um, accomplices that they've been showing on the evening news, but... Uh, no, no, we'll, we'll get a better one to show it later. Anyway, <laughs> what's, this, uh, what's this I hear about you killing multiple members of the armed forces and having um, having a deserter from the American army with you? That, that is just on all air of proportion. Apart from the uh, AOA. I must say, I'm, I'm terribly disappointed in the um, company you keep nowadays, we all matter what they are. Listen, Charlie, we've all got our problems, haven't we? So, uh, let's oh, not indeed, stop going indeed. We all have our crosses to bear, you know, Master Watley. Pause, why have you come to a microphone and it's echoing like fuck now? Yeah, stop that, Pause. I don't know, I've changed some, I can't get rid of these faces either. No, stop you. You, you're doubling back with the box box on, with the music, with the speaking. Anyway, what can I do for you, young Master Watley? Yeah, uh, well, I've got an item that might be of interest to you, and we need to uh, know a bit of information about it, man. Oh, I you really? Man. Oh, really? Do tell. Uh, well, I don't know, it's some kind of statue. What is a statue? There's a tentacles coming out of it, but it's strangely made. Foss, can you turn your microphone back to whatever it was? It's really echoing. Yeah. 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 Sorry there. So, if you could go ahead and describe this statue for me. Yeah, it uh, looks like it comes between a slug and a hedgehog with spikes coming out of it and three tentacles with red jewels on top or something. Sorry, sorry, could you repeat that? Slug, hedgehog, with sparks coming out of it, and tentacles, three tentacles, with red diamond jewels or something like that. That fixed in. Really good. Good quality. Is it covered by any chance with spikes? Yeah, that's what I said. Covered in spikes. Like a porcupine. Dear God, I'd, I'd heard rumours of such a thing, but I'd, I'd always hoped that they were simply mere rumour. Please, you know please tell me, young Master Wally, that uh, you've not been unfortunate enough to touch any of the spikes. Um, I haven't, no. Oh, well, that's a relief, at least. <laughs> well, I don't know... I don't know too much about the statue itself. However, in my line of business, I deal with um, people who traffic in esoterica, the strange and the unusual. There's always a profit margin in that. The weird one, yeah, yeah. Uh, as you wish, young Master Watley. As I was saying, I recently came into possession during a card game of a particularly old manuscript said to have been recovered from the Arabian Desert. It's practically Middle Ages. Right. And this manuscript, this manuscript has a um, a description of a um, religious idol that seems to very much match the idol that you're talking about. And do you know what this paper says? Not all of it, um, it's in some sort of strange language that I don't completely understand. Right, and why do you say don't touch the spikes? Well, there is, um, I have managed to decipher one particular passage with the help of a professor friend of mine, you know, from the old days as a lecturer, right. and um, apparently these spikes um, contain a reservoir of a strange poison, uh, 
I wasn't able to work out the exact effect of it based on the description, but apparently it's quite, quite lethal. Right. Um, <laughs> well, that, that's, that's fair enough. Well, we'll offer us back. Yeah, so I'd certainly advise against it, my boy. So, um, is it worth a lot of money? Well, um, anything is worth money to the right collector. There is mention made of precious stones on it. Uh, there's also something about anointing it with water or something similar, but uh, again, that's part of a passage I haven't fully translated yet. Right, anointing it with water. Yeah, yeah something about underwater cities. Well, I believe that the, um, the ancient Arabian tribe that uh, originally possessed this idol believe that it fell to earth from the stars and apparently it fell it into a as part of a large meteorite forming a circular crater which filled with water nothing about underwater cities but a, certainly a crater full of water and apparently okay. this idol was found in the crater. I don't set any store by it. It's all particularly fantastic, as these things often are. Oh, yeah, you would think so, but... Well, I've got one. I've got well, perhaps, perhaps we could arrange to um, meet up in a discreet location. I could have a look at it first hand. Yeah, if you'd be interested, yeah. Oh, I'm always interested in making a profit, my boy. Well, so am I as well, especially in these um, uh, times. <laughs> Obviously, I would be taking a great personal risk associating with you at this point, given your um, current high profile. I would expect somewhat of a higher percentage than my normal price. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that and see you. But Splendid. Well, um, how about you decide on a location? Ring me up tomorrow, shortly before you want me to meet you, so as it gives anyone else less time to listen in, and then we'll yeah. meet up wherever you decide in the city. That sounds good to me. Excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing you on the morrow, dear boy. Uh, yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow, mate. Indeed. TTFN. TTFN. Okay, you hang up. And I'll, I'll basically explain all that to these guys. Not a problem, he quickly gives you the logo. Oh, maybe it wasn't for that. Yeah, in the river. Yeah, I, well, I don't want to anoint it. That doesn't sound good. Okay, you guys are starting to feel quite tired now. Put a glass of water on it, Horatio. Chuck some water on it. No, don't. I'll go stand outside. <laughs> don't. I'm going to grab a bottle of water off the shelf and chuck it on it. No! I'm, I'm getting I'm moving. I'm getting the fuck out of the way. You're mental. Okay. You head to one of your large supply of bottled water. You pick up a Can we bottle. Start out echoing? You pick up. It's not coming from me now. And you head over. Oh, it's still you. I can see it coming through on it. Put some headphones in. Yeah. Fuck's sake. You haven't got any headphones. What the hell? You don't live in a third world country, don't you? Just turn your mic down a bit, Foz. You get headphones free with your phone. <laughs> okay. You throw a bottle of water over this statue. A bottle of water over this statue. Oh, God. Me and Pidge are out of there. Okay. I'm standing Trev outside. and Danny, okay. you Trev beat feet and, and head outside. Yeah, I can get that. Peek around the door, though. <laughs> you can peek around the door. Okay, not a problem. You pour the water on the statue. You wait for a couple of minutes. Nothing untoward seems to have happened. It's a now a wet statue. There you go, boys. Mystical Mumbo Jumbo. It is a statue. Nothing more, nothing less. 
All right, brilliant. We'll come back inside then. Okay, you both head back in. Dave, stop muting, false. Um, uh, it, it stopped echoing when I muted him. When I muted him last time. All right, false. Give us a se give us a second, false. Yeah, it's definitely yours, false. Yeah. Oh, it's not muting. Then. I muted yeah. him. It, it stopped echoing. Go with me two seconds. I'll see what I can get. Okay, no problems. We've put, hear you we've, we've put you on mute, mute Foz, while you're messing about with that. It's not letting me mute. Then. Can you guys still hear me all right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, you can't have an online game without a few technical issues, can you? Well, no, I've got a few technical you issues. You can. Well, it, yeah, you just don't have Foz in the game. <laughs> <laughs> He's a walking technical issue. You say you can't have technical issues. <laughs> you can't without have Foz. Foz. Yeah. yeah. What came first, Foz or technical issues? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> They're both around the 80s, weren't they? So. He's looking for the tape deck on his computer. He <laughs> doesn't have any headphones. Who doesn't have, headphones? have a pair of headphones? I've got three sets around my own. I've got two within arm's reach now. You know what I mean? <laughs> what the hell? Right, so wait, yeah, we're waiting outside. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll cut to you guys outside whilst uh, Poz is sorting himself <laughs> out. Okay. Nothing's happening. There we go. Let's put Foz on mute for a bit so that I'm not echoing while he's sorting himself out. Yeah. Okay, you two outside, you see this water cascading over this statue. Now, if I'm correct, both of you have come into contact with the green slime, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, technically, but it hasn't been in me. In, no, it's not been in you, you're absolutely right, but you have both come into contact with it. Yeah. Can you both please make me uh, four sport rolls? Oh, wait, Echo's back. Echo the fold. <coughs> make a what, sorry? Four sport. Oh, what? Am I got two in there? Uh, not bad. Okay, as this water hits the statue. Trevor, you're suddenly overcome with the uh, the strong feeling as though someone was stood behind you, watching at you and staring. You know, sometimes when you're in a room and you can feel like someone's eyes on you. You know, someone's looking at you. It's like that. However, you glance around over your shoulder, but you can't see anyone apart from like Danny, who's just stood next to you. Hello. 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 What the fuck was that? Meanwhile, what? while he's while he's doing that, Denny, yeah, with your role of fair, fair, you, I'm sure you can hear like in the distance, like very faintly coming from the direction of the riverbank, like further down, like further away, yeah. back in the direction you came. I'm sure, you can hear a familiar woman's voice going, Denny, Denny, well. Denny. Whoa. Um, and given that you're attracted to um, women who remind you of Scarlet, I will offer you a fake point if you feel yourself drawn in that direction. Yeah, go on. I'll, I'll okay, take you've got a point. You're now back up to three fake points, Dave. No, I got part though, because we refreshed, didn't we? That's true, yep. Yeah. yeah, I haven't used one yet. Okay, cool. Woohoo. You feel yourself being. As your usual look behind you, Trev, go, oh, what the fuck's that? <laughs> you see, like, Denny appears to like, get this sort of, like, almost sort of dreamy look in his face, and he sort of starts. Dream, dream, not, not, not running, dream, but sort of, like, moving at a quick walk down by the riverside. Denny, where are you going? You can't get your fags out of the car now, it's sunk. As you're, <laughs> heading, as you're heading further down the riverbank, Denny, the yeah. voice seems to be getting a little bit louder. And you're sure that it's Scarlet West voice, and it's like, Denny, Denny, are oh. you there, Denny? Can you hear me? I'll show you. Scarlet. Denny. I'm here. It is what he's running toward. It, as you, as far as you can see, Trevor, he's running like smack bang towards the river, going, Scarlet, Scarlet, I'm here, I'm here. Like, fuck, he's lost the plot. I'm going to shout for her ratio and then hightail after him. 
Okay. You've, you've poured water on this statue ratio. Absolutely. Your call's happened. Then suddenly from outside you hear Trevor going, Horatio, Horatio, Denny's lost it. Then you, then you hear a... As Trevor starts running after him. What do you do, Horatio? Pour my water over it. I've got to run out. Yep. yep. Um, well, we've got a great deal of hand doing it, really. You what? There's not a lot I can do either, really. Uh, Fucking chase after him with me. Uh, There's nothing yeah, I can do. I'm going to do it now. I'm just going to run out and walk from into the river. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, as, as, it's, as it's starting to get into early morning, the usual sort of mist has started to hang over the river, and as the moon's going down, it gives it a strange sort of ethereal, white, ghostly look to the river. Oh, will it echo the fog is back? <laughs> going on, fog? Anyway, let's just press on, never mind the echo. <laughs> As you're running forward, Denny, in the mist you can see this sort of faint human shape. And for a moment you think you see a brief flash of red hair. And you see like a hand being extended out of the mist towards you. It's a slender female hand with bright red fingernails. And this voice goes, Denny, come with me. We can be together just like we always wanted. Is this, is this on the river bank? Or, the river? or as far as you can see, you're just surrounded by this mist. All right. And this figure's just sort of like appeared out of the mist, reaching out towards you. Now, Trevor, oh, you can't see this figure. Neither can Horatio. You can just see Denny sort of staggering into the mist towards the water. I'm, I'm going to try and use my aspects of the seeing everyone's face. Yeah. Uh, to basically, I'm going to try and resist uh, knowing that she has died and this can't be a. I'm going to snap myself out of it. Okay. What sort of approach are you using? Uh, Is he gone again? He's still with us, Dave. Yeah, I'm with you now. Okay. Uh, that word, no problems. What role are you making? Oh, yeah, I see. Crack on. I presume it's that fair role, is it? No, that fair one was from him looking about. Okay, come on then, Denny, make your roll. Never mind right, typing an essay. So it's lagging out a little bit. Sorry, guys. I'm not responding. Okay. Okay, so I got a fair, spend a fair point on that aspect to get plus two. I got plus four. That takes it up to a great roll. Okay, as you moving forward and you're sort of reaching out for this arm, the mist suddenly parts slightly and you can see Scarlet stood there in the mist in front of you. But as as you sort of peer through it, thinking, oh no, it can't be her, she's dead. She, she was shot by Abbott. You see a huge bloody torn hole in the side of her torso where a fat abbot's bullet ripped through her flesh and you can see a tracery of green slime slowly dribbling from the wound as she holds out her arms towards you and she's like Denny the black city's waiting for you all you've got to do is step into the water and you can be with me forever I'm going to scream you're not Scarlet I'm going to pull out my gun and start shooting into it 
Okay. okay. As okay. far as you... I, Go ahead, say, I realise as well that I had to spend a fake point before I'm on to. I forgot I used it on. Okay, Horatio and Trevor, what you see is you see Denny sort of running into this mist shouting, Scarlet, Scarlet, it's me, Denny. Then all of a sudden he sort of like pulls back a bit with this horrified slash disgusted look on his face. And he's like, wait, you can't be her, she's dead. And he pulls out his gun and starts going, into the mist. Can't done it. Oh, gee, gone full retard, Trev. Oh, isn't that? Wicked. It's gone full retard. <laughs> Although you guys don't see the figure... No, I should be able to do soon. ...after the firing of the bullets, there's suddenly a loud splash as though something had dropped in the water near Danny. You see your bullets rip through Scarlet's frame, green yeah. slime spraying out of the back of her, and her body just topples into the water with a loud splash. Have some of that, not Scarlet. You peer, not Scarlet. Into the you peer into the water, but you can't see because it's all murky and polluted by the affluence of Arkham City. Okay. I'm going to turn around. To... Danny. What? Get away from the water. I'm going to come back. I'm gonna say, is there a ratio there? Has it come down? Like, yeah. Hell? Yeah. I'm like, don't put away any water on that statue. That was mental. As far as you're concerned, a ratio fuck all happened. I just had to shoot some aspect that looked like Scarlet made out of fog. I guess it had something to do with that stupid statue. Horatio starts telling you you're tripping. Well, yeah, I, I know that. I, but something to do with that bloody statue, isn't it? I haven't taken any drugs. That's Trev. He's been on the drugs. I haven't had any... Well, I've had painkillers. Yeah, a lot. I, I, I can feel like there was something behind me. Like well, there you go, see. Okay, guys, you've all been pretty much on the go for the last few hours. You are starting to get quite tired. As you were talking earlier, the plan seemed to be to hole up for the night and then head out in the morning. Is that still the plan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you all head into the, the little hut and bed down. Obviously, Horatio locks the door behind you. And Make sure all slowly. the windows and shit are closed, closed properly. Oh, you best believe that you're you're making that list and you're checking it twice, Trevor. <laughs> and make sure that fucking statue thing's in a safe or some shit. Yeah, you must have a safe here, actually. Because if someone does break in and try and nick it, and then kill us, at least you might as well look the statue up. Also, then I can't fucking look at it if I wake up and it's sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Trev. Trev. <laughs> so I put it in a fucking face. Trev's like Horatio. Put that fucking statue in and say... Before I start tripping balls again. Do you have a safe Horatio? Um, I probably do have a safe, yeah. That's absolutely fine. You lock it up in the safe. Obviously, you've still got your welding gloves, so you're okay picking it up in the bags. You put it in the safe. And you lock it and spin the dial. Horatio. Yeah. Just, just in case you like, you may accidentally die in your sleep, tell us the code as well. Just in case. <laughs> you're the only person that can get it out, that's not good. Alright, I'll tell you the code. The code is... Write it down. 14, 17, 21. Right. 14, 17, 21. Okay, no problems. And you all I've put that drift in my off pilot. into sleep. Yeah, put it in pilot. Okay, you all put that in your palm pilots and then you all slowly start drifting off to sleep. Yep, that's a crazy dream. And as you sleep, indeed, as prophesied by Dave, I foresee the future, Mills. <laughs> Once again, Trevor, you find yourself stood in the now familiar black cobble streets of the underwater city. However, this time, when you look to the left and right of you, 
both Horatio and Danny are also stood next to you in the blackness of the underwater city, the pale moonlight filtering down through the ripples of the water. Horatio and Danny, you see the underwater city as previously described. Huge twisted spires of buildings made of a green black metal reach like twisted trees or fingertips up into the air. Water ripples around you and you stand on slick black cobbles made of some strange stone that you've never seen before and littering the streets and walkways of the city are numerous dead red shellfish covered in withered spines. Nice. All three of you are stood in this black underwater city. <laughs> he cocks his gun. <laughs> okay, Horatio, you reach down to the side of you and you find that there is no gun there. Oh no. You all appear uh, to be stood wearing your normal clothes but devoid of any other equipment or trappings in this street. When you try and talk to each other, no yeah. sound escapes your lips, but like bubbles of air emerge from your mouths. Well, I'll, I'll sign language to Trev. <laughs> he burbles something at you, Trev. I'm going to point at a piece of my clothing that's got black on it. Yeah. Black hole. Black hole. And then he points on it. Get away from that black fucking hole. <laughs> Start walking that way. Okay. You head through the cities following Trevor Watley. You realise that the streets are sloping down at a shallow angle. And as you get to this sort of town square, there's this large sort of black abyss-like hole in the um, centre of it. Bull you can see that there no longer appears to be the red flickering light that you saw previously, Trevor. I'm going to pick up another cobble and give it to Horatio. Trevor picks up a large, loose cobblestone and hands it over to Horatio. I'm going to skim it into the... Into the, into the, into the okay. It bounces down the street and skims into this large, gaping, black abyss. I'm going to turn around. Well, not turn around. I'm going to start slowly walking backwards. Not a problem. You start walking backwards when suddenly, Trevor, you feel a hand grab onto your shoulder from behind. Fuck was that? I'm going to turn around and flail a bit. Okay. You turn around. You see a large, fat, pasty figure stood behind you. And despite the fact that half his face is missing from the bullet wound inflicted by Horatio, you see the waterlogged and swollen corpse of Fat Abbott Watley stood behind you, one corpse-like skeletal hand grabbing onto your shoulder. And in a voice that is perfectly clear, despite being under the water, he says, No, you shouldn't have done that, Trevor. I'm going to scream but <laughs> bubbles are coming out okay you basically, you basically see him like, <laughs> like bubbles spraying up you know when someone gets bit in the Jaws film when they get pulled in the water yeah. like, <laughs> he's like that <laughs> you hear uh, <coughs> Fat Abbott in a clear voice still no bubbles escape from his lips and you can hear his voice perfectly clearly although with surprise and mounting horror you realise that you're not hearing his voice so much as it's like inside your head although it's unmistakably Fat Abbott it has the same sibilant snidey tones that he always uses and you hear him say I told you I was quite a nice man Denny I'm part of a bigger family now but just to prove that bygones are bygones, you can join us 
you can still be part of the top of the heap, Danny. It's not too late. You can have your eyes opened as well. I will think in my head. Screw you, Fat Albert. I'm not going to join your crappy bloody undead family. <laughs> <laughs> you undead fuck. <laughs> he continues saying, with a slight tinge of sadness in his voice, and he moves slightly, sort of stiffly in a disjointed way, and he says, Why do you think that old fool Pearson set you up? You guys are meant to be the sacrifice. Yeah, you can all hear it. All you right. were meant to be the sacrifice. But instead, what? it ended up being me. And Scarlet. And all the other people who are now members of the family. I'm just shouting out to him in my brain that I'm not bothered what he says. It doesn't disturb me because I'm convinced it's not real. No matter how scared I feel, I, I don't believe it to be real. I think I'm feeble. <laughs> well then... If it's not real, Horatio, step into the abyss. You've got nothing to be scared of. You'll wake up in that shitty little survival shack of yours. None the worse aware, and I'll just be a bad dream. What have you got to lose? I didn't say it wasn't scary. <laughs> but all right then, all right then, I'll walk into the abyss. No, okay. don't walk into the abyss. He walks to the edge of the abyss, go, <laughs> and, he, and he stands up and he walks over the edge of the hole and disappears down into the abyss. And literally it's like the blackness swallows him up. Not even a sound. Not even a sound of him falling or screaming. Well, that was a bit of a long time ago. Not even a sound of him falling or screaming as he goes. It's almost like he's stepped into like a pool of oil or something, the way the blackness flows over him. Come on, sir. Let's get the hell out of here. I'm going to um, try and get Matt Abbott's hand off me whilst I'm <laughs> fucking flaming about bubbles. Not a problem. You easily lift Fat Abbott's hand off you. In fact, he doesn't even seem to resist. He looks at the two of you, and again, his voice sounds in your mind, and he's like, Well, who'd have thought that Horatio would be the most sensible of the three of you? He obviously knows a superior military force when he sees one. No, he's just a nutter. I don't think. <laughs> one man's nutter is another man's saint, Danny. Yeah, so if you're nutters, he's safe. Brilliant. <laughs> How about the answer. two of you then? Are you ready to take a place in the new coming order? You can either be with the new order, Danny, or you can be squashed by it. Well, as an up-and-coming uh, rising uh, criminal, I'll uh, go against the order, thank you. Pays better. That's unfortunate, Danny. And what about you, Trevor? You've already come so close to joining the family. Just a few more seconds, and you could have been riding high with all of us. We're going to be immortal. Van. I don't want any of that fucking We're all we're all going to be the immortal gods, Trevor. How can you be immortal in eggshell, eggshell frames? He points to like the, the bit, the, like the half of his face that's missing, and he's like, "Look, Trevor," and he like puts his hand up to like the, the severe wound. He's like, "Look, joining us is to have a life free of pain, free of fear and doubt." You were so close, Trevor. You've just got to reach out and take a peek it. You could be part of the new order. You could be riding high with us. Nah, I'm alright. I'm going to try, start, can I try and swim upwards? <laughs> yeah, I'm going, to try and I'm going to try and swim upwards as well. Come on, okay, please. Trevor and Danny, can you both make me quick rolls? Yeah, I can do that. Oh. Oh. oh, shite. <laughs> Is you want an arm? <laughs> you got a minus two. You're swimming in circles. I've only got one arm, yeah. <laughs> You're swimming You're in circles. In circles. <laughs> <laughs> and is that your role on there as well, Danny? Yeah, that's mine. For... Okay, not a problem. No, not, not With that role, Danny, you are the first to wake up. 
and you, for a, mo for a moment in your dream, you're sort of next to Trevor who's trying to scramble up with his one arm and swim upwards alongside you, yeah. making a sort of splashing, spluttering sound. Then as you snap back into wakefulness and wake up, you realise that the spluttering is not coming from Trevor, it's actually coming from Horatio, who is lying asleep on the chair next to you, and there's like, there's like water like bubbling up out of his mouth, he's like... <laughs> and just like water like spraying out of his ears and his mouth and his nose. Tre Trevor, Trevor's still fast asleep, he's like... Oh, oh, well, I'm going to run up to Horatio oh, oh, and start oh, slapping him. Bitch. Try and wake him up if I can. Okay, you're going to slap Horatio, are you? Yeah, I'm going to few slaps on the chap, see if that works or not. I guess it's not really. Okay, good. can you make me... I'll try. Uh, no, this is a roll for Horatio. And can you make me a... Uh, clever roll, Horatio. Or you can use um, forceful if you wish. Okay, a good roll. Suddenly there's a... And you feel like something sting the side of your head. As far as you were concerned in the dream, you stepped into the darkness, and then you were like enveloped by this blackness, and you could feel all these figures around you, some of which you recognise. You recognise uh, Scarlet being there, uh, a few other people who died recently, Abbott, for instance the army man from the original chase who got killed when the truck spun round was there and they were all standing there looking at you and they were all clapping as you were sort of like walking between them like it was some sort of like ceremony or like initiation and in front of you dimly backlit by red you could see this weird sort of spiny slug like thing with these writhing tentacles and multifaceted red eyes that seemed to glow with an inner light and the eyes moved slowly towards you sort of like drawing level they were literally each of them the size of your head until one of them was right next to you the eye split open almost like a mouth revealing more rows of these spikes inside it like teeth and there's this sort of like eye like jaw reached out to you BAM! There's a smack around the side of your head and you jerk to wakefulness you're absolutely covered in this like fetid river water and you can taste like water at the back of your throat and in your nose you know if you go under in a swimming pool and you accidentally take some of the water in you wake up like you're <coughs> but you are now awake Horatio you alright? <coughs> What's going on, Denny? You took water on me. What's going on? You jumped into some dream-like abyss and nearly drowned. Okay. What? I was in the dream. It's some shared dream shit. I'm going to have a look at Trev. Is he awake yet? Trev's still like, no, no, I've got to swim. Uh, uh. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll shake him. Okay. You, you awake, Trevor, with Danny, like, shaking you. Trev! Trev! Oh! Oh! Fucking hell. I couldn't swim. I was going round in circles. <laughs> so you had the same dream? What do you mean, same dream? Well, was that in your dream? What? Was that in your dream? Yeah. Was Horatio in your dream? Yeah, and he jumped what? in a hole and fat like on it grabbed me. Yeah. Yeah, a bit real, yeah. Why are you so wet, Horatio? Have you been for a swim? Why are you so wet? I don't know, I woke up like this. He's nearly drowned or something. Uh -oh. Did you chuck water on him to wake him up, Danny? No, he was drowned. When I woke up, the water was pouring out of his mouth. He was drowned in from nothing. What the fuck? Exactly. We need to get this item to that. Um, Doctor guy and see what he's talking about. That right, professor guy. Okay. Horatio, can you make me a clever roll? Okay. As the rest of them are talking, 
you become aware of this like sound, which is like. I thought I could do that. I thought it was just you playing with your microphone. <laughs> no. I heard it. It appears to be coming from the outside of the um, shack. It's almost like something scraping or tapping on the outside of the hut. Don't fucking open that door. You, sorry, you doing what? Go over to the window and just have like a little peek out of the, like, of the shutters. Okay. No problem. You peer out of the shutters, and as the moon briefly moves out from behind the clouds, you see what appears to be numerous figures slowly emerging from the river water slowly moving towards the small hut that you're all taking shelter in. He puts the shutter down. What do you say? What situation? The things coming out of the river? I bet they're coming for that fucking statue. I've told you to chuck it away. We're not just chucking it in the lake. That's worse. I chuck it away, not in the river. <laughs> well, she's putting the dump in, in the in the um, landfill. I don't know. Recycling bin. Puts it in the first place. I lost a bastard arm because of it. We need to destroy it, whatever it is. Yeah, let's get some guns. Let's get the hell get out of here. That's my guns. Get your fucking bazookas out. Bazookas. <laughs> I'm not saying that you're probably going to have a lot of bazookas, Foz. No. <laughs> you're probably not going to have a lot of bazookas. I was thinking like assault rifle kind of thing. Assault rifle's probably a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Uh, shotguns, pistols. Yeah, that that's fine. You can have pretty much as many of them as you want. Well, I've, I've got my two oozes. I'll reload those. Get some clips for it. Just to check, can you guys still hear me? All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's still echoey though, because I've fallen one. No, that's fine. I'm just checking. Right. What? You're not echoing though. Don't, wor don't worry about it, guys. Let's press on. Okay, so you grab a load of guns. What's the plan after that? Um, well, I'm going to suggest that we bust out, come out from blazing, burn the shack to the ground, and leave the statue inside. I'm going to lift it out of the safe and burn the shack. No, no, burn the shack is not going to destroy the statue. Burning the sta shack down is not going to destroy the statue. Well, then the, st the statue is just going to be in the remnants of the burnt shack, but I'm not fucking hanging about here. I'm going to high tail. Right, but then things look like the moving quick ratio. I'm opening the safe and getting the bag out. We're taking it with us. We're going to talk to that bloody um, that guy now, Charlie. Okay, says. you put in the code, Denny, fourteen seventeen twenty one. Yeah. You pull open the door, and as you do, you see that the spikes of the thing appear to have grown through the bag. They're literally now like poking through. Oh my God! The covering of the bag. <laughs> Get away from that fucking safe, Danny. <laughs> you right, have we got a military? I think we should burn got... it. Let's bounce. Burn it's not going to destroy a metal statue, is it? Come on, then. I don't care. Let's get out of the hell. Them things are coming. Danny. What? We've not got a car. It's heavy. It's dangerous. And it's growing. How We're not leaving it for them to take. Right, well, Danny, you can grab it and get yourself piggity poisoned. I've already lost an arm off a normal spike, never mind a fucking massive growing one. Let's get out of dodge before them shambly things come and eat us. You idiot. I'm gonna, pa I'm gonna Pass me those. Get that, door open. get that door open. I'm running. Pass me those well. Okay. Boys. At this point, Trevor, I'd like to offer you a fate point. If you are willing to as you feel yourself drawn towards the statue 
almost compelled against your will. If you're willing to take three or four steps towards it, you can have a fate point. I've still got three fate points. I've not spent any yet. I'm not going near that comp. Okay, in which case, you will have to pay one to not do it. Right, I'll pay one and not go near it. Not a problem. You do still feel this strange compulsion. It's like a will outside your own acting on you. Almost like someone's trying to hypnotise you and force you to go towards it. But you that steal yourself against it. I need to get away, boys. That thing's pulling me in. Horatio, get that door open. You see, he goes as though to take a step towards it, and then he's like, oh, no, it's pulling me in. I need to get away from it. And he sort of takes a few steps backwards. We need to destroy this thing, that's what we need to do. And setting it on fire is not going to do it. You can't have yeah. slapped me, what the fuck was that going to achieve? Unless you put it in the bloody foundry. If you dump it in the foundry, then we do that. Uh, right. Let's get shooting some fools. Right, John, I'm going to yeah. have a look around for a metal military case. They must, have, they must have some of them here. Yes, he has. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try and fit that in it. See if it'll fit in it. Okay, you are going to struggle since, as I said, it's round and it's about the size of a football. Yeah, you will struggle fitting it in your stuff. Um, would if you have one, one of the um, big that size cases? You what, sorry? It's you will spikes. risk spiking yourself. When you try and yeah, pass it up. Yeah, I'll, take, I'll put the welding gloves on. Okay. <laughs> and I'll stick it on top. Well, try and get it wedged into the metal case so I can pick up the metal case instead. Okay. I will tell you that given how the spikes have grown and they look even sharper than they did right. previously, you're not entirely sure the welding gloves will be a hundred percent up to the task anymore. They will help, but they're not going to be a hundred percent proof. I can't, can't grab all of this at actual spikes now, I don't have to grab all of it like that. You can try. Mm. At all this time, while while Denny's trying to get this ball in the case, can Horatio get this door open so I can bounce? Because I'm standing here trying to get drawn into this thing. I want to get out of dodge. All right, John. Yep. <coughs> can I make an advent... Uh, 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 an advantage aspect of uh, finding some netting or something that I can find in the thing and throw over it and drag okay, it like make, make, a, make a search roll. Uh, so I'll yeah. use quick because I'm quickly That's searching for some netting. Okay. okay. Boom. Super. Okay, yeah. You find some old sort of metal mesh netting. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like some form of like a high tensile camo net thing. And you're quickly able to wrap it around it so you can drag the thing rather than touching it directly. You drag it, you drag it into the large metal case, slam the lid down, and <laughs> click the locks. Meanwhile, Trevor's stood over by the door, Horatio. And he's like, Horatio, get this door open. I'll be back in one minute. Okay. Can you open the door first, you little shit? No, okay, what were you saying, man. Danny? You what? What were you saying, Danny, before? Well, I was going to say, because of maybe using an advantage, I get an aspect for that, don't I? So I think it's yep. like metal netting or something like that. Yeah, that's fine. You can have the aspect metal netting. So I can use that once. Yeah, for free, yeah. Yeah. But it still exists after that. Yeah, I've brought it down in my pad. Yeah, no problem. It's noted on mine. Cool. So I'll start dragging it. I'm on going to my hand and drag it. Not a problem. You 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 no you're dragging it into the case and locking it in. Uh, yeah. Well, well, if you want fit, if you want fit in the case, I'll just drag it. Okay. Looking around, you're able to find one of those like properly deep sort of like uh, secure recall cases. All right. Wicked. You flip that open, sort of drag it in using the net, and slam the lid on top of it. Wicked. So you've now got a case with it in. Right. So I'll start carrying that. Okay. Horatio, Trevor's still like stood by the door, going, "Open this door! I'm getting out of dodge, son." <laughs> you can walk over the door, kick it open, and okay. Then start. Okay. okay. 
Can you make me a forceful roll? Fucking hell. Ah, me too. Zero. Just okay. use the fucking key. Horatio <laughs> unlocks the door, boots it open. It flies open. He gets ready to go out with his gun. The other two of you briefly see, have an impression of like skeletal hands from all around the door, grabbing hold of him, and then he disappears outside. Nice. <laughs> so, so the building is surrounded. Then, can we see that? Help me! Help me! You, 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 you can hear the voice going, Help me! Help me! And you can see. Outside is the thick mist from the river. Oh, brilliant. Occasionally, shadows move in it like figures. Right. Now and again, you, you see like a flare, as you think, well, obviously, Horatio is firing his gun. Right, well, I'm just going to start running out, pulling the trigger, and like run towards the flashes from Horatio's gun. Yeah, me too. Not aiming at the flashes. Okay, can you both make me shooting rolls? I would say quick's probably the most likely since you're running out like. Yeah, quick. Oh, that's good. Okay, as you reach the bank of the river, you can see Horatio up to his waist in the freezing cold, misty waters. There's the there's about five pairs of skeletal green slime encrusted arms emerging out of the water sort of pulling him down into the water as he's like frantically firing his gun at the water around him Denny, get that fucking netting out of the box and leave the fucking statue in the box pull the netting out and right, guys, you've got yeah. five seconds to decide what to do before he goes down four yeah, I'll do it, three. I'll get the netting out well, I'm going to drop the box Two. Open it up, grab the netting out, and throw it on him. Okay. Well, not throw it on him, throw it what to him. What are you going, what yeah. going to do with the idol that's currently in the net? Uh, can I pull it off? Oh. Yep. Yeah. It's not just staying in the box. It's just pulling the net in off the box. Yeah, you, you, basically, you basically tip the net up and empty it out into the crate. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to try to throw this net over Horatio and pull him back out? Yeah. Okay. Okay. At which point, normally you would get a plus two if someone was assisting you. However, because of Trevor's obvious problem, it'll only be a plus one. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, make a forceful roll. Forceful. Let's see if you can man you can manage to pull. Oh, nice. Plus one. Yeah, that's plus fine. one yeah, takes it up to superb. As you're fighting off these hands that are pulling you down, Horatio. Suddenly, this high tensile camo netting like drops over your head, and you're pulled unceremoniously out of the water. There's like a sucking sort of <laughs> sound, as though the water itself doesn't want to let you go. And then you're being dragged at the surface by Trevor, who's got the net wrapped around his one good arm, and he's like pulling it. And Denny's like a bit further forward, pulling it with both his hands. And you're sort of dragged unceremoniously up to the bank. Slowly, these expressionless figures with their heads hanging down start emerging from the water. Denny, do what you're doing with that statue in the net because I am running. I am gone. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going away from go. the river. Yeah, I'll grab the box. Oh. Okay, what are you doing with the idol? Well, it's in the box still, isn't it? So I'll grab the box and run. Okay, so you're all going to make a run for it? Yeah. Make, make a quick roll. Oh, fuck! <laughs> I thought that was mine at first. So, two pair for me, average for falls, and mediocre for a try. Okay, so it's looking good for Diamond Denny Watley. Yeah. Not looking so good for the rest of you. Do any of you want to spend a fate point if applicable? I would. 
the only the only thing I've got is getaway driver. I know it's not car related, but can I use any kind of getaway related thing to give me a bonus? Let me think. It's it's tenuous, but at this late stage of the game, I'll allow it. Mm -hmm. You can spend a fate point for that. You can either re-roll or get a plus two. I'll have a plus two. Okay. So that takes Trevor up to fair. But what about yourself, Horatio? Uh, military training? Yeah, I'm going to use some like, kind of anti kidnap kind of training. Spend the fake point. Okay, are you going to re roll or add two? Okay, that will take you up to good. I like how Danny's got this box with the idol in it, and he still manages a superb get. <laughs> it's keeping my balance, isn't it? That's it, man. Okay, the well, three of you begin no, sprinting away from the river. So I'll just yes, say, Danny. With, with that Scott, obviously, I'll probably put it down to about as good as them because I'm carrying the box and that. Yeah, all like you're all about level as you're sprinting yeah. away from the um, river. Oh, you can see these figures behind you. Yep. I don't want to see them. Okay. A ragged, haggard voice again sounding in your heads from behind you. This time, not Fat Abbott. A, a more older, a wiser a more calm and calculating voice says just leave us the statue what? we'll be allowed to go Phil Van Pierce <laughs> just a sec guys what? Oh. oh pigeon mum star oh for fuck's sake <laughs> <laughs> Trev's gone, he's been called by his mum he can't play Trev, you gotta come in, it's late. Oh, Mum, I'm playing Call of Grand Theft Cthulhu, my mate. Fox D. I'm gonna run and I'm gonna help Danny. Right, what's happening? Okay, you've heard this voice that's basically said if you leave the statue, you'll be allowed to go free. However, when the voice says the word statue, you also hear like a darker, sort of burbling, gurgling voice at the same time say, Grack. What? Why don't you just leave on the statue? Why do you want to sell it so much? You thought it's, it's a choice between getting free or getting some quiche. It's not, it's not happening. If they, get, if they get all of this, obviously something bad's going to happen. I don't think we'll survive, so that's not happening right now. Well, they've said we can go free at the minute. Oh, yeah, I tell people they can go free when I'm about to shoot them. <laughs> if they're going to tell me something. This is, it, man. this is what I've been telling you about all them years. This is the end. This is what I've been prepping for. Get that statue, Danny. I'm going to give you an hand. Let's bounce. Right, let's go. You let's glance back over, over your shoulder. Let's stop the end of the world or something. Yeah. The figures, the shadowy figures emerging from the river seem to part and they wizened haggard old man with white hair hanging down from his shoulders and a gaunt almost skeletal complexion moves out of the front of the crowd and the voice okay can you make me a clever roll Denny and indeed anyone who's looking at this old man I'm fucking I'm high tailing <laughs> Okay. Yeah, anyone who beat, who got fair or higher, you recognise the figure of Asaph Peabody, the head of the Peabody family, who's not been seen in public for a number of years due to illness. Right. That's an illness. Uh, he reaches out a hand with a long chipped fingernail points at the case that you're holding, Danny, and says, the statue is mine. Return it to me, and we will let you leave. 
Somehow I don't believe you. I can't run in. I would be swinging two arms to run, but I've only got one. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Can you make me a quick roll, Danny? Yeah. Yes. Can I just make a note that I'm also trying to help Danny? Okay, yeah, you need to two. make a quick roll as well then. Oh no, I got plus two done. Should I make a quick roll to no, it's, it's fine, Trevor. Okay. The two of you are quick enough to drop the case as suddenly spikes burst through the metal of the case. Jesus. You're quick enough to drop it before they actually hit you. Whoa. The figure, you hear the figure behind you say, Glacky Awaken. Nothing awakening this shit, you know? Bye! <laughs> Fuck it, yeah, you're like, you're like, I think this shit's awakened. Trev's like half a mile in front of you. Trev's got your back. From <laughs> way back. Cheers, Trev. I'm going to take a pop at the figure with my gun, but then if I miss or whoever I hit, I'm just going to bounce. Okay, make your shooting roll, roll your quickness. What are you shooting? Shooting at Asa. Oh, Asa. Yeah, I missed it. Okay, I'll, I'll have a shot, shot goes well. wild. Not a problem, Ratio. You snap off a shot without even looking, it's bolt. I'll, I'll have a shot at him as well, and then bolt. Go on, then. It's going to be quick. Yeah. Uh, no, probably not. Your shot hits one of the figures behind ASAP for your body, and you see it fall to the ground. Are you also running? I am. Okay. The three of you run for what seems like hours, heading directly away from the river towards the outskirts, following Trevor as he runs through the back alleys of the city. Eventually, many hours later, when you're sure you've left the figures far behind, you stop and exhausted, you find somewhere to crash for the night and fall asleep. Can I uh, can we get a faint point back if we find ourselves in Chinatown? <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't worry about it too much, Pidge. We're about to wrap up anyway. Okay. Yes, yeah, you could have done. Okay. You wake up next morning to hear an Arkham City news vendor screaming about the latest news stories as he hawks his wares and throws his newspapers at passers-by. As you dimly awaken up, you waking up first, Danny, you hear the voice of the newspaper vendor saying, Mysterious disappearances along the Gotham River. Read all about it. More people disappear by the river. Police baffled. Read all about it. I'll go down and get paper. Okay. Trevor, you've also started to wake up. Denny comes back with a morning newspaper. He puts it down, and the main headline story is it says, Arkham City Police Department baffled by multiple cases of disappearances by Riverside residents. Returning to the second page, where the mainstay of the story is, you see that shortly after you fled the river area, the two districts either side of the river suffered a mysterious number of disappearances totaling 50 people in all. The Arkham City Police Department is baffled. The only mention of any clues are that some strange biological residue was found in the homes of the people who disappeared. Are we mentioned in the paper? The city seems to have more or less forgot about you and they are now concentrating on these mysterious disappearances as the people of Arkham's first for the macabre and unusual 
has gripped the public imagination. Yeah. As, you, as you look at the picture on the front of the newspapers, you see the river in the background and the ripples of the water. You can't help your minds flashing back to those slow, purposeful figures advancing in lines out of the river. You notice that no mention is made of the statue or any such thing being found in the Arkham City PD sweep of the river. Could I make a clever roll? You can indeed. See if I can make a rough guess and remember roughly how many of the figures came out of the water. You can indeed. Oh, fantastic. There was certainly a good 10 or 20 people came out of the river. However, you know that as you ran away from them, they were still advancing away from the river into the surrounding area with slow purpose. And indeed, as you resume your lives of criminal enterprise in Arkham City, your past misdemeanors seemingly forgotten by the police or easily avoided by yourselves given the hysteria that's gripped the city you find out that amongst the disappearances was old man Pierce and a number of the members of your own family in fact as the day goes on it becomes clearer that the three of you are the only surviving members of the Watley family Wicked. <laughs> we survived. We can take over the city, guys. And the three of you return to the city, ready to take your position as the new underworld rulers, the revived, the Watley family, the next generation, if you will. Yeah. However, as you do so, you can't help but think of Fat Abbott's prophecy that a new order was coming. And for the rest of your days, as you move into old age and you live out your lives, every time you hear a rush of water nearby or the sound of the river, you feel a cold sweat break out on your face and you can't help wondering if this time will be the time that you'll feel Abbott's clammy hand reaching out from the river to grab you by the shoulder. And that's where we will end our session, gentlemen. Wicked. Well, that's it. <laughs> good end. I hope you all enjoyed that. Yeah, that was good then. How did you all find that as a second session? That rounds off the Grand Theft Cthulhu Part 2, the Ballad of One-Armed Watley. Thank you very much for playing, guys. We, ap yeah, we, ap we apologise for uh, the technical issues. Indeed, well, there's always potentials for like coming back and doing like another one-off involving these characters. That's not a problem. One of the great things about the Fate Accelerator system that we've been using is it's very easy to pick up and just sort of like run with. So that's not a problem. And it sort of like it rewards a more sort of collaborative approach. Like, hence um, me asking Dave to like detail his contact and asking you to like detail what your um, squat was like was when you got to the riverside and indeed at the previous session asking Trevor what sort of things he'd have in his garage trying to get you guys involved in defining parts of the session rather than just me sort of going this is how it is that's how it is yeah the, the whole idea is that we all sort of tell the story together that was, a, that was a good story, that. A good kick through loose there. Indeed. Now, if you'll bear with me, guys, I'm going to finish the broadcast here.